Hey everyone, welcome to Sunshine Hills Church Online. So glad you're joining with us today. Hope you've been having a wonderful summer. Just a reminder that we are meeting in person at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings. We'd love to see you there. Uh, we will continue, continue to be producing online church as well if you're more comfortable still viewing at home. For today, we're joined once again by the Pack Life worship team and then Pastor Tom will be bringing the word. Are you ready? Are you excited? Church starts now.
stain on the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before him. The lion and the lamb, every knee will bow before him. Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, He is my song. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, He is my song. Lord, You are good. Good, good, oh, 
you are good, so good. Oh, oh, oh. you are good, good. Oh, feel mercy, feel with peace. You are faithful, you are faithful in all things. You are good and your love endures forever, Lord. You are good, you are good, you are good. song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh Jesus Jesus the name above every other Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And we sing, only there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open the
sing holy. We sing holy. There is no one like you. There is none besides you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead in your love to those around me. I hope that you've been enjoying the summer. It's been nice to have the hot weather, although some of you perhaps it's too hot for. And one of the things I've been enjoying is I've been enjoying the fact that it's warm enough that I can kind of sit outside and kind of think my way through things. As I have been preparing for this week, I've been thinking in terms of, of the big M, the big Mo, momentum. And I've entitled this sermon, Are You Coasting or Cruising? Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that we can be together today, as has been my practice, Lord, again. And we pray that you give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts to respond. Lord, it's all about the fact that you want us to continue moving towards you and being more like you to make a difference. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to center my remarks out of a very well-worn passage of Scripture. Interestingly enough, over this last while, I have been going back to passages of Scripture that I have preached on and thought about a lot, but it's been wonderful as there's been new things that God has revealed to me. So I want to have you turn with me in your Bibles to Philippians chapter 3, 12 through 15a. And just for the record, I have my Bible here, but given old eyes, it's easier for me to be able to read it. I've got it in big print. So here's what Paul writes, Philippians 3, 12, 15a. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already been made perfect. But I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining or pressing towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And then I want to zero in on verse 15. It says, all of us who are mature should take such a view of things. So the question is, are you coasting or are you cruising? So I want to talk about the reality of coasting, first of all. Coasting is either going downhill Or if you're not going downhill, if you're on the flat, there is a significant loss of movement and momentum. Neither of those things, I feel, is an acceptable stance for us as Christians, especially in light of what Paul writes. And he says, all of us who are mature, that's a choice on our part, should be taking note of these things about not that we have, ex- we have arrived where we want to be, but we are pressing forward. We are advancing. So we have talked over this last while, including last week, about the fact that Christianity was never meant to be static, but it is meant to be dynamic. That's true of our relationship with God. That's true of our friendships. And for those of you who are are married, that your relationship with your wife or your husband is not meant to be something that's static, but it's something that's supposed to be dynamic, that you're learning new things, that you're learning new things about the people that you work with or or in your extended family. And you're also learning new things about yourself that God is calling us not to coast. Coasting is always downhill at its worst, or it is, uh, even on the flat, causing us to lose momentum and we slow down. And if we slow down enough, we fall off the bike. Then I, I looked up the word cruise. Um, I'm, I'm always surprised at how English is such a dynamic language. And uh, just for the record, I know that one of the definitions of cruising is not good. So I just want to just say I get that. But just because one of the definitions isn't good, you know, it's about going, you know, out cruising for chicks, I guess, is one of the ways of how I would have said it when I was growing up. 
But I want to talk in terms of cruising. And so I looked, and one of the definitions really captures uh, what I want to land on. So we've talked about coasting. I'm talking about cruising in the good sense. And it says that uh, of an airplane to fly at the most efficient operating speed. Are you, am I, are we cruising as an airplane? Are we in that sweet spot, that optimum, most efficient place of our operation? It gets us to our destination more smoothly and quicker and with less effort because we are in that jet stream. Or the second one is has to do about the speed of an automobile to travel at a speed suitable for being maintained for a long distance. So we've talked about the fact that our walk with the Lord, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And we want to be cruising. We want to be in that spot of optimum um, efficiency and that is sustainable over the long haul. Now, of course, we're in in, uh, the Olympics are being on TV and and I've been watching one of my favorite parts of the Olympics is in the beginning. I'm not so much on the track and field, but I really like swimming and, and whatever. And I was watching one last night and there was this guy that he just took off really fast and he was out ahead, but he didn't sustain that he wasn't cruising. He expended the majority of his energy in the first part of the race and he ran out of gas and was overtaken by those who were just in that optimum place of, of cruising. So which are you doing right now? Are you coasting? And it's fairly easy. We've just come out of COVID-19 and we're still emerging from all of that. And, and again, people are saying, boy, I just want to just go out. I want to go camping. I want to go on holidays. I want to take time off. And that's a good thing. You know, that's all part of self-care. But the question is, if we're not careful that that can become our new preferred way of being. And I want to encourage us as we're talking today about, yes, it's good. Take time off. Yes, you know, if you're going on holidays, I plan on doing some holidays myself in the next two weeks. But we need to see that that is a respite from moving forward and pressing towards all that God has for us. It is not meant to be our destination. Which are you doing? Are you coasting? Or are you cruising? And to quote Dr. Phil, how's that working for you? One of the things I like about about school is is that you never know what something you're going to learn comes in handy. So when I got thinking of coasting and cruising, and when I got thinking in terms about, about forward motion and momentum, it reminded me of physics. And the idea of inertia came up. Now you might say, what on earth is inertia? Well, here's the definition. It is... A, the, a property of matter by which it remains at rest or in uniform motion in the same straight line unless acted upon by some external force. Now, to quote my dad, I can say, boy, that preaches. So uh, the simple way is, is that an object in motion tends to stay in motion. An object at rest tends to stay at rest unless it is acted upon by some external force. Well, I got thinking about that. And and again, the reality is the Holy Spirit is with us to empower us and to encourage us that his desire and his purpose for us is that we become more like Jesus. And as we become more like Jesus, the greater the impact on our own life and then those round about us. I've been in church all my life and there was this expression that was kicked around and it says, oh, he or she is so heavily minded, they're of no earthly good. Well, that is not a biblical idea. I have inverted that. It says that he or she is of a so heavily minded that he or she is of great earthly good. My suggestion to you is the clearer we see, the more focused we are on the prize of knowing Jesus and obtaining that, that fullness of the calling that instead of being useless and so out of touch with reality, my suggestion to you, as we learn to cruise, we are in optimum mode to make a difference in our world around about us. Now I want to dig out this passage a little bit more. The greater context of of what we just read is Paul reviewing his past, acknowledging his pride, and also being sorrowful about regrets. We see that his starting point for future focus 
was looking to see where he had been. You've heard me talk about how I was at a prophetic conference and and uh, I have a propensity to look in the rearview mirror and this guy had never met me before. I was just one of um, hundreds of people at this conference and we were we went forward and he was laying hands on people and he just looked at me and he stopped and says, I don't know you, but the Lord says to you, stop looking in the rear view mirror. Now, rear view mirrors are very helpful but and they're great for seeing what's behind you, but they have no value in looking at what's in front of you. Question is, it's okay to gain perspective about where we have been. It is a measurement. It says, well, I started here and we drove so many miles and we got from here to our destination. Boy, that was a long trip. So there is some metric there. But the reality is that God wants us to know that our future is what is important. He wants us to be constantly advancing. We want to have constant m- momentum and motion towards our preferred and his preferred future for us. Now, coming out of this COVID situation, we have the opportunity of having time for reflection. Said, boy, I missed that. Or boy, you know, uh, did I did I use my time wisely when I was free to do what I want to do? So it's okay to look back and gain perspective on where we have been. But remember this, that God wants us to be moving towards our preferred future, but more importantly, his preferred future, which is coming into the fullness of what he has. Now, one of my strong convictions is that people want to make a difference. I really believe that with all of my heart, that everybody wants to make a difference. We want to be able to say, does it really matter that I live? Is there something for me to do that is beyond just mucking my way through the mundane? Or does God have a, a larger plan and purpose for my life? Well, Paul here is saying, I want to lay hold of that where which I was laid hold by God. He had a received a revelation in his spirit that God wanted something more than just for us to survive. He has called us to thrive. So we have an opportunity to hit the reset button and say, okay, that's past. What are the new things that God wants for us to encounter? What are the new things that he wants to do for us? Paul started with the comparison of what he had lost and what he wanted to gain. What he had lost, you know, he talked about, oh, he did really well in school and at the university of sitting at the feet of Gamaliel, and he was very zealous about keeping the law and whatever, but he said, but I count all those things as loss for the surpassing knowledge and purpose of gaining Christ in his fullness. Sometimes I get concerned, and, and I'm aware of this too, that I can talk more about the Marvel Universe, although it pales in comparison to my son-in-law, who knows a lot more about that, or about what's going on in the Olympics, or about this football game, or that baseball game, or whatever. And sometimes we can fill our mind with things, though they're okay. Is it really pushing us forward? So there's that tension between rest time, which we're supposed to have, and also pressing. And as we walk step for step with Jesus, he will help us. When we need to stop and rest, we do. But when we need to advance, we advance. But it's not about saying being stuck. It's about coming into the fullness that God has of gaining Christ and knowing him in his fullness. Now, some of his things that he enumerated were good things. But there is a danger in the good things that we have accomplished in the past to feed our pride and to depend upon our own abilities. says, yeah, man, I can do that. I was thinking in terms of Exodus 14, 13, and I, I put that and tuck it in here. It says, do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance of the Lord. He will bring you today forward. The Lord is the one fighting for you. You need only to be still. Now, that seems kind of contradictory. I'm talking about the big M, the big momentum, and if you're a sports person, you can see how momentum is won and lost in football games or basketball games where everything's clicking and then somebody gets into foul trouble. Like I saw that the other night where the United States, uh, uh, Kevin Durant, one of their star their people, that everything was going good. He had a hot hand. He got into foul trouble. They set him on the bench and the team lost the big mo, the big momentum, and they went on to lose that game. 
So the reality here is, is we need to rest when he rests, and we need to walk when we walk, we need, when he walks, we need to advance when he advances. But at the end of the day, it's all about progress. It's about we start here, and every day and every week and every month, gradually but very purposefully, we are to be more like Jesus, more in love with him, and more uh, submitted to him. Now, again, you might say, oh, pastor, that sounds so preachy. I don't mean that to be preachy. I think about that all the time. I cannot live on yesterday's tank of gas. I can run out of gas. And are you running on fumes? Am I running on fumes? Am I coasting? Or am I moving forward in a very intentional way to be able to understand all that God has for us? And let me tell you this, it's awesome. Doesn't mean it's easy, but it's awesome. So I want to just say this, that without clear direction and destination, you will, I will end up somewhere, but not where you want or I want to be, or not where I think or I say I want to be. The reality is, are you coasting and coasting downhill? Are you just, oh, I don't need to read my Bible today. Oh, you know, I prayed yesterday, or I I said my perfunctory, hey God, how are you today? And, And I move on. But I really believe that in this season, as we emerge from COVID-19, the whole world is, is reflecting and saying, where do we go from here? I want to be one of those people. I want you to be one of those people. I want to walk with you. I want us to be embracing what Paul is saying is forgetting what lies behind. And we've talked about this. We don't know exactly what it's going to look like as we reemerge. But I can tell you this, everything in my being says it's going to look different. The message is the same. The, messes will, the methods will change. God is not saying, I want you to duplicate what was forgetting what lies behind and looking forward to what, lie, what lies ahead. Now, here's the application. First of all, recognize that you have not arrived. That's the starting point. When I get into trouble, I say, well, you know, I'm doing pretty good. And, you know, the Bible says, it says, be careful of him him who stands, uh, let him think he stands. Be careful lest he fall. That I find it's really easy to get caught up. Says, you know, things are going pretty well. You know, I'm doing okay here. And remember, we talked about that when we did the study of Joshua, where Joshua, you know, they had this huge victory um, against Jericho. And he says, oh, we don't have to send the whole team out. And they ended up being defeated, and he was on his face. If we're not on our knees in victory moving forward, we're going to be on our face in defeat and crying out to God. Recognize you have not arrived. Two, press on. Push forward. Make sure we're taking advantage of the big mo. Take hold of the purpose that God has planned for you. Now, that's a whole other sermon, but I want to declare to you that God has a purpose for your life. God has a purpose for my life. And even though I don't always understand it, or I thought I had it all figured out, but I am right now in that space where I say, God, I still believe, regardless of the changes of my personal circumstances, I am believing that you still have a plan and a purpose, and I am going to trust that you are good and that you are still going to use me, that I want to press on to take hold of this purpose that God has planned for me, even though it looks different but I will rest in the fact that he's good. I want you to know. That's the second application. Make a choice to say, I'm not going to coast, but I'm going to cruise. I'm going to pedal. I'm going to, I'm going to attack those hills. I'm going to press on. Well, I'll tell you a story. My, my older brother, Steve, uh, he um, was just an absolute animal in a good way on a bicycle. He and a friend of ours, just for kicks, uh, uh, we lived in Ohio, and just for kicks, one summer, hot summer a day, they said, oh, let's ride from Dover down to Marietta and back 220 miles round trip. And they did that just for nothing else to do. Or we'd go to Mount Seymour, those of you who know Greater Vancouver, it's, it's one of the ski hills, and on a Sunday afternoon, he says, oh, I'm going to go up Mount Seymour, and it's just miles of, and, and what happens is, if you know anything about of, of, on, a, on a bike, what happens is, these road bikes, you have to get up, and you work your whole body, and he just attacked. Well, listen, I spent a lot of time with looking at the back end of my brother's uh, rear tire, because that's where the weaker rider goes. And I'd had a fall one Sunday afternoon, we were in between services, and you know, we had a sunny morning and a sunny night, and, and so I'd taken a fall, and I was kind of shaken, and our friend, um, he, he just uh, decided to try my brother on for size. He was my age, 
And so he took off, and he was really far ahead, and Steve kept saying, hey, we'll just let it give him his head. And then when he was just almost totally out of sight, and we were up one dial of and you could see the other side, so he said, are you okay? I'll see you in town. And he just took off like a rabbit. And he just, he just attacked that hill, and he, I saw he ran my friend down in a good way, and he, over, and he overtook him, and he was in, in the center of town before. So I want you to know something, that I want us to be in, just enthralled and excited about, about pressing on to all that God has. Third, forgetting what is past. Learn from it, gain perspective from it, but do not allow it to be an anchor for you. Let it be a springboard. Which way are you facing? Four, keep your eye on the goal. Win the prize for God that God has for you, that he has called you heavenward. And there are so many things that can keep us out of, out of really pursuing the things that are so important. And Paul says, one thing I do, the singleness of focus there. We need to remember that that God is more concerned with our eternity than he is with our momentary creature comfort, but he really wants us to be focused on the greater good. It's all about perspective and faith. And finally, I end with this. In verse 15 of Philippians 3, he says, all of us who are mature should have should take such a view of these things. I want to be counted amongst the mature, and it has nothing to do with, with age, although that helps, you know. Uh, I, one of those African proverbs that I've quoted, it says, an old man can see sitting down what a young man can't see from the top of a tree. But I also know people who are old, and they say, well, I've been a Christian for 40 years, and my brother was a big deal. You've repeated year one 40 times. Maturity is a state of being, and it's about saying, this is important, and I'm going to put aside, Paul says, childish things, and I'm going to go towards the things that really matter. So here's the deal. All of us who are mature should take such a view of these things. So I close with this. I want you to realize that it is God's plan for us to grow. It is God's plan for us to walk in maturity. It is God's plan for us to take hold of everything that he has. Yes, we will come into our reward in the, pie, pie, in the sky by and by. But I want you to know that God is looking for people like you and like me. And, and he's looking for churches like ours that are going to say, we are going to press on to the future, to the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, I ask that you would help us, Lord Jesus, to keep this in sharp focus. Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would help us to not get mired in looking towards the past for our inspiration, but that we would look toward maximizing the present with our eyes towards your future for our lives. Lord, I pray, God, that, that we could learn from the things, the mistakes, and the victories of the past, but remembering that, Lord, that it is you that will lead and guide and empower us. Help us, Lord Jesus, to be monitoring and preserving that the big MO, the big mo momentum in our spiritual walk, and that we would attack the hills of opportunity and forget about how hard they are, but remembering that when we get to the top of that hill, we can say, look what we are able to do in the strength of the Lord. I pray this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, I want to just say to you, I don't know who all is looking at this, but maybe you have yet to take that first step. Maybe you're tired of doing things in your own strength, and maybe you've tried in your own strength, and you've come to the realization that you need help. Right now, you can say, Jesus, I need your help. The things that I've done in the past, they just don't satisfy. I'm going to accept the fact that you died for my sins. My past can be forgiven in Jesus' name. That you accept the fact that he died on the cross for you. That he rose from the dead to prove he was God. And that as you invite him into your heart, he will be kind of like my big brother. He, you just keep your eyes on that back wheel and let him bring you along to those places that he has for you. Let's pray. Lord, I pray if there's anybody that's making a decision to follow you for the first, first time, God, we pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, that you would encourage them. I pray, Lord, that they will find their way into fellowship, whether that's here watching online or making their way into uh, being with other believers as we encourage one another. We ask this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.